hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. How many of you got Come on, some change you need to throw Jesus down right now? Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Love's made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. One more time, say, say. The chains will fall. Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Love's made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Go. Oh, yeah. Oh, let there be freedom. Oh. We say, when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come on, say. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Where the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. of the Lord. Amen. Everybody who's a believer in Christ, we are free by the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. We worship you this morning, God. We worship you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to share you with you guys real quick the verse of the day, right? I know everybody has a Bible verse here. Well, the verse of the day, it says Romans. Sorry, just load it up on me. Oh, here it is. Okay, Romans 15, 5, amen. The word of God says, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ. Amen. I like it because it says the word harmony, right? Harmony with one another. Everybody who is here, we are all in harmony. We are all with one another, amen, in Jesus Christ. That's just like beautiful to me because it's just like we're all here for one purpose, for one reason, and it's to worship God, to get closer to God. So today the word says encourage. So I'm encouraging you to just let go and just surrender everything. We are here for one person only. The person who brought you here today is the reason that we are here, the reason that we are living, the reason why we are worshiping, the reason why we are breathing. The reason why we wake up in the morning every single day to go to work, to provide for our families, to continue on in life, to share more of the gospel. Amen. So I'm encouraging you to just worship with me this morning. To just worship. Worship doesn't mean to just sing. It means to just, just talk to God. Just give him everything that you have. All of your problems. Just surrender it all to him. Because we have a God, church, who lives and who responds to you. We don't have a God who doesn't listen to you. We have a God who listens and he was there to listen to all of your problems. But you need to just surrender it all to him. We cannot do it by ourselves. I encourage you to worship with me this morning. We just worship you, God, this morning. We thank you so much for your presence, God. Thank you so much for bringing us to your home, God, safely. We pray, God, for the people who are watching at home, God. For everybody who is not here physically, God. To just bless them where they are, God. You read their hearts, God. You read their minds, God. You know what they are in need of, God. And we know, God, we realize that we need more of you every single day, God. You are our way maker, God. You are our promise keeper, God. You are the light in this darkness, God, in this world, God. You are the only light, God. We just worship you, God. We worship you. We worship and we worship and we worship. And we will not get tired of worshiping you, God. Let this worship just flow out of our mouths, God. And let it reach to your throne, God. 
receive our worship, Jesus. Sing with me. So you are here, moving in o u r midst, and I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. Declare now, say, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, say, moving in the midst, and I worship you. Hey. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. Yes, God. And I worship you. I worship you. Hey. And we say, Hey, make miracle work. Promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. w e make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, say that is who you are. Hey, you are here. Touching every heart, yeah. And I worship you. I worship you. Say, you are here, healing every heart. And I believe God. Then I worship you, yeah. I worship you. Say you are here, amending every heart. Yes, and I worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are here, all oh, turning lives around, and I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never say a lot of church. Say. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel like you're working, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. And even when I don't see you, you're working. And even when I can't feel you, God, you're working. 'Cause you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle work. The light in the darkness, my God, that is who You are. Oh, 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 oh. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. The light in the darkness, my God, that is who You are, and that is who You are. To him, say that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that is 
is who you are. Say, a waymaker, miracle worker, waymaker, miracle worker, waymaker, miracle worker, hey, waymaker. Everybody say, Waymaker, miracle worker. Waymaker, miracle worker. Waymaker, miracle worker. Waymaker, miracle worker. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I can't feel it, you're working Cause you never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working And even when I don't see it, you're working And even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Waymaker Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, oh, oh. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Praise you, God. We ask you this morning, God, to just open your floodgates, God. To just rain all over us, God. I ask you, God, to just bless us with health, with wisdom, God. Bless this church, God, every single person who attends Jesus. We worship you this morning. Yes, God. You are worthy of our praise, Jesus. You're so worthy of our praise, God. I want you to sing a song with me. Say, let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Say, let it rain. Let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, and let it rain, let it rain, so you open the floodgates of heaven, and let it Let it rain, Lord, open the floodgates of heaven. Yo veo una pequeña nube de tamaño de una mano, y esa es la señal que tu lluvia va a caer. Yo veo una pequeña nube y del tamaño de una mano y esa es la señal y que tu lluvia va a caer. Yo veo una pequeña nube y del tamaño de una mano oh y esa es la señal y que tu lluvia va a caer. Yo veo una pequeña nube y el tamaño de una mano. Oh, y esa es la señal y que tu chula va a caer a llover. Oh, y a llover y abre las puertas del cielo. Llover, oh, y abre las puertas del cielo. 
Thank you so much, God, for bringing here this morning, God. Your Holy Spirit is here, God. Amen. Amen. Everybody can take your seats, and we're about to give the announcements. Amen. Good morning, Day Spring. We are happy and Good morning, Day Spring. We are happy and excited to say this is our fourth consecutive service in person. The Lord is moving in here. Our Bible study series. Christians. Our Bible continue study series, Crazy Rich Christians, Zoom, continue Peter every Wednesday night on Zoom with Pastor Peter at 7.30 p.m. Stay in God's, word during, the week PM. Stay in God's word during the week to keep that faith alive. Prayer classes are Sundays at 9 a.m. and Prayer Tuesday classes nights. are Sundays at 9 a.m. and Tuesday nights. If you need guidance, please, please contact Sister Nadine or Pastor Peter for more information. November first, we will resume our children and teens. Sunday November first, we will resume Sister our children Lisa and teens Sunday Michelle school. Michelle are happy Sister to Lisa any and Pastora Michelle are happy to answer have. any questions or concerns you may have. Mission Day, Mission Day, October twenty fifth. Mission Day, Mission Day, October twenty fifth. We will hear we'll about our support for a missionary family. family. Moving we to Puerto Rico to spread the love of Jesus. We will have a special speaker, Pastor Daniel, joining us, Daniel joining, us joining, us joining us to celebrate. We hope you guys can all sign up to come. Don't forget to keep signing up through our church phone. Don't forget to keep signing up to our church phone or website for the upcoming services. The pandemic has hit the whole so world like in all aspects in life. So we would like to say thank you for the May ongoing the support to keep our church afloat. May the we Lord bless y'all each day week. more and more. Jesus loves we hope y'all have a so blessed we. week. Jesus loves y'all and so do we. Amen. Who's that kindergartner doing the announcements? It's not a kindergartner. It's a great voice. It's a fantastic voice, right? Much better than, than my deep, raspy voice. So, um, well, praise God. Welcome to everybody that's uh, on social media and Facebook. I want to ask you all to do your part in sharing the gospel. So share and like, make your comments today. Share it out to all your friends and family. For everybody that's here... Look to your neighbor and say, welcome to Dayspring. Getting some feedback. Okay, well, praise God. Can y'all hear that? Maybe it's me. <clears throat> okay, we'll get it. So let's, go, let's do what we always do. We have to start uh, giving thanks to the Lord, and let's ask Him to speak to us today. So when I'm praying, pray for yourself to receive God's message today, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your presence here today. We thank you for opening up this building, this church building, for us to worship you. I thank you for the praise and worship team that is here, Father, and then leading us into worshiping and to be in your presence. The songs, Father God, were perfect, talking about your love for us and our love for you. It goes right into today's message, and only a God like you can coordinate that. So, Father, I pray that our hearts and minds will Forget about whatever distractions, stresses, sins, anything at all that may be keeping us from you right now, Lord. And I pray that just during this next little bit that we would just focus on your word and fellowship with each other. I thank you, God, for using me and get me out of the way. Speak through me today, my King. I need you, Father God. We all need you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So again, thank you guys so much for uh, being here with us today. And, um, you know, Elisha and Fernanda 
are back from their wedding and their honeymoon. Look at this. Give a hand clap to Lord. Yay, all right. <laughs> She's got a ring on it. So she, I'm surprised she didn't show when she was up here. So tell him congratulations. He's got his army fatigues on. I don't know if he had to leave, but I know he's, you know, military duty stuff. So we're so happy to have you guys back. And Gary's back here with a new addition to his family. Look at Gary's. All right. Praise God. <laughs> Gary also got married recently. Hey, that, that rhymes. Gary got married. <laughs> so congratulations. It's Sherry, right? Yes. Gary and Sherry. Man, it should be easy enough to remember. So praise God. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from North Carolina. Who want to say that? Indiana. Man, I wasn't even close. But that's a long commute. So guys on, on, on YouTube if, or on Facebook, if they could come all the way from Indiana, you can come from wherever you are. <laughs> Praise God. So man, we're so happy to see you guys again. And, and everybody else that's here, thank you guys so much for being here. So um, today, you know, we're going to continue on with our uh, series that's called Leads to Salvation. And, um, you know, there's so many things really that lead to salvation or that can lead you to seeking salvation but there's really only one thing that leads us to salvation it's just jesus Amen. there's nothing else so when we were getting ready for the wedding last week i was doing the ceremony for elijah and fernanda i asked michelle you know she's of course she's getting dressed and she's all excited and every wedding i do she's all excited hey am i going i'm like well i hope so i mean i'm performing the ceremony so I'm just going to, you're just going to come. So she gets all excited, right? I'm going to do my hair. And do my, I'm like, you know, she's not even getting married. So I said, hey, why do women like to go to weddings? And she said, it's easy. She goes, because it's a love story. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, then that made sense, right? It's a love story. Some guys, you know, it just kind of goes over our heads, right? We're think, men think about the honeymoon, the food that we're going to have, not the actual ceremony, the women thinking about the wedding and stuff. I said, okay, so it's a love story. So then, you know, I thought, well, what's the greatest love story of all time? Man, I'm glad I asked myself that question. John chapter 3, verse 16, it's going to be on the screen right here. And it says here, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life and not perish, right? So that, my friends, is the greatest love story of all time. And we should be just as excited as my wife was to go to somebody else's wedding when we come into the presence of the Lord, when we know that we're in love with Him and He's in love with us, we should be just as excited, right? Amen. Praise God. So let me introduce you to the one, in case you have never met Him, let me introduce you to the one who's always loved you and who always will. You know who it is? It's just Jesus. With all of your stuff, with all of your sins, with all of your stains, with all of your imperfections, the only one that has always loved you and always will is just Jesus. Can I get an amen if you're with me on this? Look at what Jeremiah, we're going to go to the Old Testament prophet, Jeremiah 31. i got a lot of different scriptures, but we're not going to stay in any one, any particular amount of time. But Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, verse 3, this is what he's telling us. God is telling through Jeremiah to his people, he says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Those are some very powerful words. Everlasting love and unfailing love. Man, has anybody in your life ever loved you everlastingly and unfailingly? Is that a word? I don't even know. We're going to say it's a word today. Has anybody ever loved you that way? No. Only Jesus has. Just Jesus. And if you fall in love with Jesus, you know where he leads you? To salvation eternal life with him he saves you from this perverted life he saves you from a messed up mind he saves you from a sinful life he saves you from an enemy in a world that is out to destroy us and take us to hell by the way i don't know if you know this or not but hell was not created for humans it was created for the devil and all the demons that cat were cast out of heaven but when we choose to be a son of the devil by disobeying God, not repenting of our sins, not accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then that's where we end up as hell. But it's not made for us. It was made for the devil and his angels that are following him. So let's not go to hell, everybody. Let's accept the love that Jesus has for us. Let's accept him as our Lord and Savior. Be drawn to him. 
He's drawing you right now by his unfailing love. And those that are looking out there, he is drawing you by his unfailing love. And his love is everlasting. Can I get an amen if you're with me on this? Listen, I told you a minute ago, God loves you no matter what your past is and what you've done, your background. He loves you with all your sins. He does. He's trying to clean you up. And the proof of this is that cross. That's the proof that he loves you with this undying, everlasting, unfailing love. And Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. You know, the ultimate price was death on that cross. And that's the, sh that's the symbol of his love for you. So when we look at this, we wear it as jewelry. It's a sign of torture. I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But ultimately, that is, should show you that that is a sign of love. This love that he has for you. Everlasting unfailing it never dies you see man jesus if you think about this for a moment jesus never sinned he didn't but he took all of your sins on his shoulders he bore all of your sins and he took them and carried them and nailed them to the cross which should be your cross and my cross he did it that shows how much he loves us god calls this agape love there are four different types of love, but agape love, it's a supernatural love, and it's a love that he has for us. And I'm going to tell you, with this agape love, man, people can be transformed. You'll never be the same again when you understand what God's agape love is. We have, we're very limited in the English language. We have the word love to try to describe so many things. But there are actually four different words that we're going to talk about that talk about the different types of love. I'm just going to go over them really quickly. Storge is the first one. That's a family love. That's the love that you would have between brother and sister, cousin, mom and dad. It's, it's storge love. Then there's phileo love, which is a love between friends. Okay? Brotherhood, sisterhood, right? Then you have the eros love, where you get the word erotic. It's the romantic love that you would have between husband and wife. The love that I'm talking about today, though, is agape love. It's unconditional, it's supernatural, it's God's love. You can't describe it, you can't put it in a box, you can't try to define it. You can feel it when you're close to Him, but to try to explain it to somebody, it may be a little difficult when you're far away from God, but that's the love that He has for us, and the proof of that is the cross. Sending His own Son to die on the cross for you, to bleed to death for you, that's agape love. The other f three loves that I talked about, storge, phileo, and uh, eros love, man, those are easier types of love. Those can be more conditional, right? I'll have these rom romantic feelings for you as long as you do what I think you should do. I'll have brotherly love for you as long as you're good with me and I'm good with you. I'll have a family type of love for you as long as you're close to me and you don't, you know, dis separate from me. But agape love doesn't break. It, it doesn't break. You can't break that type of love because it's from God, it's unconditional, it's supernatural, it's unbreaking, it's never changing, and it's never ending. Agape love, man, that's in the good times and in the bad. God loves you in the, your good times and in your bad. Can I get an amen if you felt that? This type of love takes sacrifice and it takes action. Agape love is not a sit back and let me feel type of love. It's an action love. And the proof was Jesus going to the cross. And only God's agape love will save you. And through who? Just Jesus. This sermon has been in the works long enough to me, for me just to preach about just Jesus. And that's what we're preaching about today. Just Jesus. You don't need to hear anything else. It's just Jesus, and it's just his love for you. John 14, verse 6, they ask him a question. His disciples answer, ask him a question, and Jesus, they say, Hey, Lord, show us the way. If you show us the way, we'll tell you. You know, we'll follow you. And he says, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. God loves you so much, he showed you the way to salvation. He didn't have to. He could have tried to let you figure it out. But he lets you, man, in one sentence, he shows you right here, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's how much he loves you. This is an unconditional love. If you're full of sin, 
if you've just committed adultery, if you've just killed people, if you've just lied, if you've just done all these things and you flip open to John chapter 4 verse 6, he doesn't wipe that out so you can't read it. He lets you read it. And that shows his unfailing, unconditional love for you. I don't know if this is making sense to you. You see, but if he didn't want to, he would take it away. If you try to read, if you do all this stuff and you feel bad and you open up the Bible, if he wanted to, he could take the Bible away where you wouldn't read it. But he doesn't do that. Instead, he draws you to that. He says, listen, my son, my daughter, you are living in filthy, dark sin. You're going to hell where you don't deserve. Open up my word. And go to John chapter 3, verse 16, and see how much I loved you. Go to John chapter 4, verse 6, and see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he'll tell you to go here and go there. My point is, he gives you this word right here so that you can see his unfailing love. You may not always feel it. Actually, there's going to be some days when you just don't feel it. But it's more than just a feeling. This is unfailing. It's everlasting. It never ends. And it is for us. Can I get an amen if you're with me on this? God loves you so much, man. He shows you this way. And Jesus came. When he came, he came to unite us, to bring us in unity with him so we can be in heaven with him always. That's why he came, to bring unity, right? He came for his bride. Have you ever heard that the church is the bride? Talking about weddings just a little bit earlier, Jesus is married to the church. Look to the person next to you and say, you're the church. Jesus is married to you. Come on, guys. Look to the person next to you and say, you're the church. Jesus is married to you. And just like a husband marries his wife, they have these vows. They have these vows that I go through. I have premarital classes when I do these. And I tell them, man, there's some very important things. that I'm, Everything is important there. But I'm going to tell them the last thing I say that what God has put together, let no man separate. And in part of the vows, it's, in sickness and in health, in good times and bad, till death do us part. Not till I don't feel like it anymore. Not till I don't think you're attractive anymore. Not till I don't feel like you're too lazy or you talk too much or you don't talk enough or you're not nice enough to me. Not because you don't buy me flowers anymore or you disrespect me. It didn't say any of that. It says, I'd say this until death do us part. And the persons have to say I do or I'm not signing that marriage license. That's part of it. Till death do you part. Let me tell you something. The younger you get married, if you're going to live to be 100 years old, if you're only 20, you've got 80 years of great times and 80 years of not so great times. You're going to have 80 years of good times and bad, sickness and health, richer and poorer, until death do you part. Or you're going to be able to make it through all the bad stuff. Only with Jesus you can. Without him, you won't. Without him, you'll be another statistic. Without him, you're going to fall away. Without him, you will go to hell. But with Jesus, you will find eternal salvation and find your way to heaven. Jesus, the great news, man, is that Jesus, you know, when I say that it doesn't, it's not when you don't feel like it anymore. Jesus always feels like it. He always feels like showing you his agape love. He always comes and he always wants to draw you to him. He died on that cross to show you that. Nobody else here would want to do that. But Jesus wants to do that, and he did it. It's not just a feeling love is doing. It's a verb. It's an action. Jesus died for love. That was an action. He didn't think about dying. He didn't write about dying. He didn't say, I'm going to live a thousand more years because I really don't want to do it, Father. Let me just live a little bit longer. No, he did something. He allowed them to beat him. He allowed them to do everything that they did, and then he went to that cross and died for love. Now, that's agape love. It's unconditional. It's unfailing. And it's what sent Jesus to the cross. Let me talk about the cross for just a moment because just in case you don't understand the depth of God's love for you. The cross is a symbol of torture. It was the most cruel way at that time how the Romans tortured people to death. It was a painful and humiliating death. It was an execution, brothers and sisters. I know that we look at Jesus and we see him with a loincloth, but most of the time they were stripped naked. How else do you humiliate somebody except to strip them naked? So imagine for just a moment, you've probably had pictures in your mind of Jesus getting whipped and beaten and dragging a cross through thousands of people, shouting at him, some spitting at him, yelling at him, getting beaten. Now imagine that with him being completely naked. Humiliating. 
It's execution. He's not on his way to his vacation. He's on his way to death, a death that he willingly went to die for you. The other thing that you don't see in the pictures is most of the time people were impaled with a stick or a staff in their genitals. What is that? It's like a pole somewhere that it, sh- that it doesn't go. It's torture. It's not a vacation. So not only did he take whips for you and get slapped for you and he had a crown of thorns and bled to death for you, not only were these things that were ripping his flesh off, he was also stripped naked and impaled with something. Is that love? Who here would do that? As much as you love your kids or grandkids, you probably wouldn't do all of those things. You might take some of those things, but would you take all of that? No. Just Jesus. He's the only one that would do that for you. And why would He do that? Because you can't do it. And because He loves you so much, He did it for you. The things that He took were the things that we should have gotten on that cross. We should be stoned to death. We should be hanging for a cross. We should be stripped naked. We should be impaled. We should be slapped. We should be beaten and spit on. We should be called names. But instead, he loves us so much, he said, I'm going to take this for you, my son, my daughter. I'm going to show you what agape love is. What happens on that cross, people can typically take days to die. Days. So they stretch out your limbs. As far as they'll stretch your arms and your legs. And then they tie you real tight where it's cutting off circulation. Or in Jesus Christ, they nail him to the cross. So now you're already beaten and exhausted. Jesus was, by the way, whipped to the point of death. He didn't last very long because if he would have just gotten a few more lashes, that would have been it. So he's now he's, he's having to take this. He's walking. He falls and breaks his leg. Read the scriptures. Read the gospels if you don't know what I'm talking about. So much so somebody had to help him take it. This guy, would, not this guy, our Savior was beaten to death. And then he's taken to this cross where he's stretched as far as he can stretch. Try to stretch and then hold yourself up. Because what happens when you're on that cross is all your organs, your heart, your lung, they start to compress. They start to squeeze together. So you have to hold yourself up just to... Just to get a breath. How tired must he have been after all this night of torture. And here he is holding himself up. He can't breathe. We know about the breathing. Everybody's had the coronavirus. You know what I'm talking about. I've had to see my wife not being able to breathe like... (gasps) Trying to take a deep breath. And here she is breathing. (gasps) All night. (gasps) For months. Imagine that. He's doing that. Trying to hold himself up. While he's bleeding to death and people are still, now they're gambling for his clothes and they're still calling names. Hey, if you're so great, if you're the king, why don't you come down? They're still making fun of him. And what is he doing while he's up there? He's praying for them. He's praying. At any moment, he could have called the angels down to come and get him. He said, and he could have taken him down. He could have just said, okay, enough is enough. I've, I've done enough, right? No, he hadn't done enough. He needed to die. His blood needed to shed. He needed to die to separate from that flesh so that we could live with Him eternally. So your heart squeezed. Your organs are squeezed. You start choking. You you can't breathe anymore. And then you finally die. We see where Jesus was stabbed to see if He was dead. Right? They didn't flick Him on His toe. Hey, are you alive? Nope. They stabbed Him to see, are you alive? I'm showing you. You might think, well, man, that's gruesome. And I know there are kids in here and I get it. But this is what our Savior did. This is how much He loves each and every one of you. He did that because you can't do that. You couldn't do it for yourself, but He loves you enough with this agape, unconditional, unfailing love where He had to go and die this humiliating, excruciating death. He was executed for love. Only one person has ever died and done something like that for you, and that's just Jesus. Nobody else has ever done that for you. And when you hear all of this, what I just described, who deserves your love? Just Jesus. Man, if nothing else, but out of respect and appreciation for what He did for you. And you might say, well, Pastor Man, what can I do? How do I love Him the way He loved me? Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, it tells us, They asked him, what's the greatest commandment? 
They were trying to trick him in some things, but the question is still valid. And Jesus replied and says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And one other version says, with all your strength. All, not part. Not just the part of your heart that comes on Sundays. Not just that. Not just the soul, by the way, that's your life, your lifestyle. Your soul, it comes out in your behaviors and your life, okay? So if you're partying and doing a bunch of crazy stuff Monday through Saturday, that's not loving God with all your soul. That's at work, that's at school, that's at home, that's at church, that's on the road when you don't feel like being patient. That's at the grocery store when people aren't doing this or doing that the way you think they should be. That's all the time. All your soul, he says, and all your mind. What do you fill your mind with? Take a break from TV and social media, brothers and sisters. Put that stuff down. Instead, put this in, the, put the Word of God inside. When you start doing this, when you start loving God with all your emotions and your feelings, with the way that you live, and you start loving Him with your mind and the way that you think all day long, and then if you add the strength, that means with every bit that you have inside of you, man, then you are now starting to love Him and understanding the way that He loves you. You're loving Him now the way that He deserves to be loved. Jesus doesn't deserve just your love every once in a while. It's every day, all day long. Because of Him, you're here. It's because of Him you have the things that you have. It's not because of Him you have all the bad things that happen in your life. No, but He's gotten you through it. Okay? So it's because of that we should love Him. Listen, these are some of the things that we love. Instead of loving God with our heart, mind, and soul, we love our jobs and careers like that. But you know what? One day they're going to let you go. One day you won't be needed. Sometimes we love our possessions like that. I got the coolest car, I got the greatest clothes, I got this, I got that. But one day those things are going to break, they're going to rust, and they're going to be in the trash. We might love our pets like that. We might love our pets with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We get them everything. We might love our kids this way, but one day, I'm sorry, our pets, but one day our pets are going to die. We might love our kids this way, but one day our kids are going to move out and start their own families. And we might love other people, spouses or other people this way, but one day those people are going to break your heart and let you down. Or you can choose to love the only one that's truly worth loving this way. His name is Jesus. You see, Jesus, man, He'll never fire you. He'll never break or rust. He will never leave you. And He never, ever dies. Ever. Ever. And brothers and sisters, Jesus will never break your heart, but he will restore it and create a new heart inside of you. Jesus. So who or what should you love this way? Just Jesus. It's just Jesus. Because nobody's done those things that he's done for you. If all you have in your life is just Jesus, you have enough. You have more than enough. If your family and your friends leave you, if your spouse and your kids, if your job lets you go, if your health leaves you, if your mind leaves you, but you have Jesus, man, you have all that you need. You might want other things, but you have all you need. Wake up in the mornings and say, man, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. If you know that you need Jesus, then you start saying, I need Jesus. Come on, buddy. His love for you. Man, it can't be compared to anything or to anyone else. It can't be. You can't look at the things in your life and say, man, that's like the love that God has for me. No. Man, God is the only one that's loved you so much that He sent His only Son to die here on that cross to die the way that I just described for you. For you, 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 for everybody looking out there for the whole entire world, past, present, and future. God sent His Son to die for us, to die that death. And because of that, I can tell you that He has agape love dripping for you. He loves you when no one else could. The Lord loves you when no one else would. The cross is the example of that, is the symbol of that. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that means with all of your baggage and all the bad things, did He love you? Yes, He did. When you're moody 
and temperamental, does he love you? Yeah. When you lose the battles in the mind, does he love you? Yes, he does. When you lose the battles against your flesh and against the enemy, does he still love you? Yes, he does. Does he love you only when you have victory over the enemy? Of course he loves you. Man, he's rejoicing with you. And when you fall and fail those other times, man, he's there to lift you up. This is a loving God. I want you all to close your eyes with me for just a moment. I want you all to hear what I'm saying. The Lord, man, he really, truly loves you. And it's just through Jesus that you see this love. God has heard your cries. He's heard them. Some of you were crying just last night. Some of you feel like you've maybe crying your whole life. And he will comfort you. He embraces you. His word says he sings over you. God will wipe your tears away. Some of you were crying this morning, maybe right now. Some of you have been crying last night, been crying for months maybe. And with this gentle and kind hand, his all-powerful hand, loving hand, he wipes your tears away. When you fall, when you fail, man, our God, he picks you up, kisses you, and cleans you off. Brothers and sisters, God loves you with agape love. It's unconditional, it's unfailing, it's supernatural. I hope that while your eyes are closed, you're having a picture of God doing these things, not with somebody else, but with you. Because these are the things He's done in your life. In your hardest times, when you've lost a loved one, He's been there to help you. He's been there to comfort you. In the times that you have failed the most and the things that you're most guilty and shamed, shame, ashamed of, He has been there to hold you and comfort you and point you the way to Jesus for restoration. In those times when you have cried and cried and tears have fallen all night and you didn't know what to do and you were lost, He was there to help you find a way. See, only God, with His unconditional agape love, can change you. Will you let it change you today? 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, it says, We love Him because He first loved us. If you think back in your life, I'm sure there are times you can see where He's loved you. And it might have been a time when you were very lovable. It might have been a time when nobody else, your parents or your spouse, would even love you. But He has loved you. He has picked you up. He has shown you this. God's agape love through Jesus is what leads us to salvation. And it's inside of you if you love Him. And if you have this agape love inside of you, then you can start showing mercy to other people. You can be kind to other people. You can handle them with gentleness. And yes, brothers and sisters, you can forgive. This agape love, man, it's unexplainable. It's unbelievable. Because I know there's still maybe some of you here that's doubting whether or not He can love you with the things you're thinking about this morning. But the answer is the cross. That's the ultimate symbol of His love. And until you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you won't understand this agape love. You won't. But when He is your Lord and He is your Savior, that means that you have submitted your life, your mind, your body, and your soul to Him. And the only way you do that is because you understand what He's done for you. You understand where He's leading you. So when you do that, He's truly your Lord and Savior of your life. Then you'll start understanding this agape love. And you know what happens when you start understanding it? You can then start showing it to other people. And guess where that will lead them? That will lead them to salvation because it's leading them to Jesus. Jesus is the only one. This is the greatest love story of all time, brothers and sisters. And it's about you and God. And there's only one place to experience the greatest love of all time. It's with only one person, and that's just Jesus. Can I get an amen if you're with me on this? Let's all give a hand clap to the Lord.
know, there's so much I could preach about Jesus. I can only tell you what he's done in my life. But you also have a story to tell. Are you telling it? When you start telling it, you're witnessing for Christ. And that's what we're supposed to do as believers. Tell other people what he's done for you. Did he heal you from coronavirus? Tell other people. Did he heal you from cancer? Tell other people. Did he restore your marriage? Tell other people. Did he find, help you find new love? Tell other people. Did he make a way when there was no way? Then tell other people about Jesus. And when they say, man, how did you do it? It was just Jesus. It ain't me. It's just Jesus. And they say, well, you had to have done something. Well, it's just Jesus inside of me then if you need to hear that. But it's still just Jesus. You give him the glory. He's the only one that deserves it. Nobody else deserves to get credit for what's happened in your life. The enemy doesn't, get, doesn't deserve to get credit for destroying it. Don't give him no credit because God's the one that's restored it. And so you give Jesus the credit that he so richly deserves and he wants, man. He wants you to look at him and say, man, I'm so happy that you're my great father. You're such a great God. He's a jealous God. We see that the word of God says this. Think about yourself. If your friend, if your boss, if your kid comes up to you and says, man, you're the greatest cook in the world, mommy. Dad, you're the greatest griller in the world. Nobody cuts the grass like you do, Dad. Nobody folds towels like you do, Mom. You make the bed so great. Nobody gives hugs like you do, Mom. Nobody cracks your nails like you do, Mom. Nobody combs my hair like you do, Dad. So think about that, right? We're made in the image of our Father. He wants to hear the same things. You go to him and say, nobody could get me out of the mess that, that I was in except you, Father. Nobody could save my wife like you did, God. Nobody could heal me from cancer like you did, God. Nobody could restore my marriage that should be broken and torn apart like you did, God. See, so start giving Him these things. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. And when you start doing this, man, you'll start experiencing this agape love that He has for you. When you experience it, brothers and sisters, it is time to show it. You've experienced it long enough this world is in desperate need of a Savior, and we have His name. It's Jesus. It's in desperate need of help. Yes, give a hand clap to the Lord. The Word of God says, but how will they know if we don't go and tell them? We have to tell them. We have to get out of ourselves and our desires, our wants, and our comfort, and move and start telling Him. How do we tell Him? We tell Him through play, uh, playing for Him, through singing for Him, serving for Him, witnessing for him leading for him teaching for him doing things for god and giving him all the credit this is how your life is going to start sharing the gospel with other people listen you can tell somebody about jesus or you can show them about jesus if you tell them they'll forget within two days they forget 90 percent most people of what they've heard within a week it's all gone but if you show them studies show that more than half 50% of what you've shown them remains weeks later. Just think if in weeks they start putting the word of God inside them or they go to an, uh, a men's or women's retreat or they come to the altar and they have an experience with God, then it continues to go and grow and grow. And these experiences that they have with God will keep them growing in their Christian walk. And guess what you have done? You have now led them to salvation, brothers and sisters, because you have led them to the Savior. You've led them to Jesus. Now, you're not going to save them. We're leading them to the one who saves, and that's just Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you're with me, let's praise God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's lead them. Let's lead these people. Let's share the gospel with people. Let's just talk about Jesus because only he's worthy of being talked about. He's only he's worthy to be loved this way. Just Jesus has loved you with an unconditional, unfailing love. It's just Jesus. There's nothing else. If I have nothing or no one else, I have just Jesus, and I have enough. I have more than enough. If I don't have my health, I have you, Jesus. If I don't have my life, I have you, Jesus. If I don't have nothing else, I have just Jesus. I have enough, and we have enough to share and to change this world. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this message that you have given us today. 
Father, we thank you that you are speaking to all of us here, Father. Lord Jesus, you are the King of all kings. You are the Lord of lords, Father God. We must bow down before you. We must praise your holy name. We must give glory where it's due, Father God, and that's for you. You died on that cross. You shed your blood, Father, for us. You came, Father God, from heaven. You were born of a virgin. Lord God, you lived 33 years. You walked this earth. You made disciples. You baptized, Father. You showed us. You made disciples. You did all of these things. And then you went to that cross and died an excruciating death just for us. Father, then you rose on the third day in all your glory, Father God. And then you stayed here with your disciples, Lord Jesus, and you showed us the way. You told us, Father God, what we must do, and that's to create, Father God, more disciples. We must go and fulfill the Great Commission. And then you ascended to heaven. And then, Lord God, you didn't want to finish there. You sent your Holy Spirit to come back here to live inside of us so that we could live like you, Father. And so for this, I am eternally thankful and eternally grateful. Father, the least I could do is tell people about you. The most that I could do is tell people about you. So, Father, I pray that everybody sitting here, everybody watching, Father God, will say that today, starting today, I will share the gospel with other people. I will tell them about you. It's just Jesus. There's no one else. Father, I pray for your protective hand over everyone that is here, Lord. I pray that no sickness, no weapons, no nothing, no division, Father God, no weapons formed against this church may prosper, Lord. I pray for your hand of protection over everyone that is here, Father. I pray that they are blessed when they come and blessed when they leave. Father, I thank you for that you make a way, Father God, when there seems to be no way, Father God. You make those crooked paths straight, Lord Jesus. I pray that your, your hand of grace will shower, Father God, all over them this week, Lord. I pray that nothing will come against them that they can't overcome with you. I pray that they will remember that scripture in Philippians 4.13, that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them, and they will say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for these children's and teens classes that we are starting, Father God, in just a few weeks. I thank you, God, that Pastor Daniel and his wife are going to come, Father God, and talk to us of what about they're going to do in Puerto Rico, Lord Jesus. Father God, missionaries is what you created to go out and share the gospel and to do what they're doing, Father God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, I pray, Father, that we will be a blessing to them and that, like, I know they'll be a blessing to us. I just thank you, God, for your blessings over everyone that is here. I pray for a beautiful and uh, strong week, Father God, a week filled with peace and joy, Father God, but more than that, a week filled with your strength. I thank you again and again for all you do. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. And the church says... Amen. Praise God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord. (laughs) Praise God. Listen, I'd like to thank you for your tithes and offerings. Uh, Of course, we keep the ministry going, all the ministries that we support. We keep paying for this place. So if you have your tithes and offerings, your envelopes, uh, you can fill those out and put them in um, the tithes and offering basket on the way out. If you'd like to give electronically, we have that information um, electronically through Zelle, Cash App, and Venmo, I believe are the different ways you can give. And so thank you guys again so much for that. Um, next week that's coming, you're going to see where some of your tithes and offerings are going. So I want to encourage you, if you have not signed up to come next week, please come next week. So uh, it's always a special week. Um, and, but, you know, let's come next week and let's support our missionary family that's going out uh, to Puerto Rico. So God bless you guys. Don't forget to sign up again, please, online. Let us know if you're coming. We like to make sure we have enough seats for everybody. God bless you. Be safe out there. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple of days, I guess, or next week. God bless. Have a great day.